I stopped this driver because he was using his phone and he rolled down the window and he said, Officer, wait a minute, I'm on the phone. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> of course I booked him. <laughs> <laughs> but I really wanted to be an actor. And uh, but my parents should have stopped at that. Mm. They had always said I could do any job I wanted as long as I had an apprenticeship. And when I um, left school, I'd, al I'd always played about with amateur dramatics. So I went over to Wimbledon Rep and applied for a job, and they gave me a job as a trainee. Mm -hmm. Great. So I went home, opened the door, went in, parents there. I said, I've got a job. Great, they said. What is it? I said, I'm going to be an actor. Well, Mum screamed and said, well, you're never going to make any money at that. Yeah. And Dad's response was even worse. It would have been better if I had told him I was going to be a bank robber. Uh, anyway, the result was, in a couple more days, I started as an apprentice electrician at the local aircraft factory. Well, was it that easy to get a job? Well, in those days, it was easy. Mm. To, you could pick your job as when you wanted it. But uh, I had a great career, but I often wondered where the acting uh, road with a lid. Mm. You never quite know what might have happened, do you? Yeah. It's uh, it's funny how life turns out. Yeah. Well, there was the time I was on protection duty at Buckingham Palace. And all oh, those corgis, they were such a pain. And there was this one corgi that had a go at my ankles, and I kind of kicked out, and I kicked him up in the air, and he flew into the lake. Of course, I had to dash in and rescue him. <laughs> and then the Queen Mother asked to see me, and I thought she was going to send me to the tower or something. But it turns out it was her favourite corgi and she thought it had fallen in the lake by accident and I had rescued it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, anyway. I kept the straight and narrow. Ended up writing software. For a large video camera company. I did a few weddings and that sort of thing in my spare time, but... But only as a hobby. There was enough money in it. Recording personal memories of the bitterly cold winter of 1962. Cold winter of 1963. And the coal was hard to get because the merchants were having trouble getting frozen snow into the sacks. Well, in December 62, the country was engulfed by thick, choking fog. Um, Smog. Mm. Uh, you could hardly see where you were going. And you had to put scarf. <laughs> You'd put scarves over your mouths to help you breathe. It was really horribly smelly. Um, um, what did the smog fog smell like? No, never mind that. <laughs> That's the foggiest idea. <laughs> was it easy to get a job? Oh, you could. In, in those days, you could pick whatever job you wanted. To. What are we waiting for? We're done. Well, we're going to do this bit. I think we just did it. We got the story. Do you know what we're waiting for, Ivan? Waiting for God. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> 
bonuses, you won't have to come here to play cards every week. Let's do that. When should we begin? <laughs> He's fine. <laughs>